It's Monday and we got a lot to cover today. The Pebble Beach Concourse to Elegance was this past weekend and there were quite a few notable reveals like the BMW M4 concept, the Galpin GTR1, Cadillac El Mirage concept, and Spiker V6 Benator Spider. Yes, let the drooling begin. Plus, we have a twofer for Commenter of the Week. What's the haps, everybody? I'm Derek D, and this is Fastlane Daily's 1,672nd episode, AK. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Spiker's B6 Benator Coupe concept was stunning, so it'd be impossible to one-up itself, right? That's right. right. Wrong. Oh. Because of this. The B6 Benator Spider concept, using the same mid-mounted V6 engine from the Coupe, making 375 horses, the Spider adds the drop-top love, and it looks really good on this car. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of convertibles, but this thing looks like it just drove out of Sexyville. Apparently, Spiker designed this Spider in just weeks, but who could tell? I will say, I think it needs a different paint job. This cranberry purplish deal just isn't working for me. But the interior is gorgeous. If Spiker makes it, the Spider will likely cost just a bit more than the Coupe's 150 grand when it goes on sale in 2015. So we say, make this Spiker Spider. I mean, none of us can afford it, so it doesn't really matter either way. So yeah, go ahead, make it. Right? Yeah. When Cadillac introduced the CL concept, we thought it looked great. And we wanted a production ready version. We didn't get it. But now, we at least have something a bit closer to road ready spec. And it's called the El Mirage concept, which is a great name. It's just fun to say. El Mirage. It's nice. It was revealed at Pebble Beach, and Cadillac says this coupe concept would represent the very best of all its models. You'll notice they altered the Caddy logo a bit, getting rid of the wreath, and I think it works. Making 500 horsepower from a twin turbo 4.5 liter V8, the El Mirage isn't all show and no go either. The interior, we're talking Rolls Royce quality. And I wouldn't mind spending some seat time exploring all the features. Yeah, hey Caddy, shoot me a call. I'm available to drive it. You think they will, AK? Maybe. Nah, it's probably not. They should though. As if the 2005 Ford GT wasn't an American automotive masterpiece already, Galpin Autosports decided to turn it up to 11 on the car, introducing the GTR1 supercar. Galpin redesigned the body, then applied two turbos, with the results being 1,024 angry horses. Zero to 60 miles per hour gets roundhoused in the face in just 3.1 seconds. And top speed is in the what range, Erica? Uh, 225, I'd say. That's correct, 100%. Style-wise, Galpin basically brought the Ford GT seamlessly into the next decade. And though it loses some drama, it certainly ain't hard on the eyes, you know? I'll give it a gander. Just did. The interior, though, well, kind of looks like Papa Smurf just threw up all over it. Yeah, you better love the color blue. And you have to listen to that song, I'm blue, da -da -da, whenever you drive it. It's mandatory, which is strange. But yeah, very blue. Moving on. Now we realize a few of you are very astute and we were, you were upset with us that we didn't talk about the new BMW M4 concept on Friday. And unfortunately, news broke after we had filmed or else we would have been all over that ish like a fat kid to a cupcake, all right? But at this year's Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance, BMW brought the concept M4. But it's basically production ready using that evolutionary design. M4 carries over the hood bulge and general dimensions of the M3, but the front of it is definitely more aggressive, and those headlights just look mean in a good way. And there's a cleaner look at the rear, and who doesn't like a clean rear? Yeah. Right? Come on. I think some may say that the front is almost too aggressive for what the rest of the car's copping. Like a designer got a little excited but ran out of creative energy, moving back along the car. In my opinion, it's gorgeous all around, so whatever. Still no confirmed performance specs, but expect about 450 horses from a twin or tri-turbo inline six cylinder. This is my example of an inline. AK, do you know what time it is? It's Monday. That's true. It's commenter of the week time, Derek and T. You're two for two, AK. That's what I'm talking about. Commenter of the week. Comment our show. Yeah, commenter of the week. Babushka. What's that, comments in? 
language I invented. Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. We have a couple comments. Our first one is from FLD fan Adam Scour, who said this, Yo, Derek D! And FLD team! He probably doesn't talk like that. I'm just wondering, how come JF comes out to Monterey and the team gets left behind during one of the biggest automotive car events in America? I practically live down the hill from Pebble Beach and 10 minutes away from Laguna Seca Raceway. Next time, make it a plan. I met JF before, and I yelled him out in front of one of the Porsche executives to show the love for Monterey County has for FLD. Hanging out with FLD for one night would make me complete. Awesome show, guys. That's what he said, Erica. Awesome. Yeah, solid comment there, Adam. And maybe we haven't really addressed this before, but JF doesn't really work with FLD anymore. He's mainly drive. We are sister shows, if you will, and we have the same studio, obviously. Now, FLD was started back in 2007, and a lot of people who work on Drive got their start with FLD. Mike Spinelli used to be FLD's writer and a producer. JF came on as a contributor and then became one of the producers. Leo Shakedown started on FLD. Road Testament, which is now after Drive, started on FLD. Matt Farah started as a guest on FLD and then had Garage 419. Remember that, AK, mm -hmm. on Next New Networks. Tom Morningstar was our editor and cameraman for a while. So when YouTube decided to basically sponsor channels, the idea of Drive was born. And actually, Fastlane Daily's 1,000th episode when we went to Germany was a big part of YouTube giving the green light for Drive. It was sort of a pilot episode, if you will. Anyway, that's why you see JF places and not necessarily the FLD team there as well. That's the story in a nutshell, right, AK? Yeah. yeah, AK's been here the whole time, too. But I appreciate you loving the show, man. Keep copping those FLD styles. All right. Now a comment from My Name is Ray. Ooh, two comments. And he said this. Dodge, 5.7 liter Hemi V8, only making 398 horse is? How in the world do you get so few horsepower and torque from such a big engine? You can get the same figures off a damn diesel four-cylinder. What is wrong with you, American? I think he means Americans. Yeah. Huge gas guzzling engine that doesn't even make any damn power. Someone's bitter. Yeah. All right. Well, my name is Ray, or Ray. Here's your answer, and let's geek out for a second here, okay? You guys ready? Yes. All right. Large bore engines are designed to put out loads of torque across a wide area of the power band. Horsepower isn't exactly the key number. These engines are used for heavy workloads, towing, and punching non-American pickups in the face. Some commenters even mentioned there are lower displacement engines out there making more horsepower, but they aren't designed for heavy workloads like towing. And yes, four-cylinder diesels also make a lot of torque, although we don't know of any making 400 horsepower. That's, that's up there. So the Hemi V8 is still pretty damn powerful, relatively speaking. No need to get all, oh, what is wrong with you Americans, Ray? Okay? Join in on this conversation if you want on Facebook and Twitter. And you know what? Use the hashtag. FLD talks engines, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, all right? We'll give it a go. Thanks for commenting, guys. We appreciate you keep those comments coming. All right, that's going to finish off this episode of Fast Lane Daily. It's going to be a good week, though. I just got to, just kind of feeling it, right? I feel like Thursday's going to be a great day. I don't know. I'm Derek D. Thanks for <laughs> watching. Don't forget to hit up all our social media stuff, and our official site is FastLaneDaily.com. You can see it all over here. I'm going to run through it every single day, right? No. All right. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your Monday. All right? It's Monday. Derek D., what's the deal with the pink shorts? Real men can wear pink. What's wrong with the pink shorts? I'm, I'm not worried about it. What do you think of pink shorts? I think they're a little questionable. I rock some pink shorts. Ain't no thing. You know what, Derek D? You were right. Pink shorts really do cop a stale. Derek, just take one take. Usually the episode is one take, but it might take a couple tries to get it through one take. Today, FYI, all one take. What other cars are from Sexyville? Other cars from Sexyville? Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a few. 
I mean, it's crazy. Even the Hyundai Genesis Coupe actually hails from Sexyville. Really? Which a lot of people didn't know that. Okay. But of course, the Ferrari 458 Italia does. And uh, something that's way out there, the Sonic. What? Chevy, what? Yeah. The Chevy oh, Sonic? Yeah. I didn't make up the rules. Sexyville? No. Do you remember the Cadillac Catera? Get out of town. Really? One of the original uh, members that moved into Sexyville. Because a lot of people at first were like, what? Like a, like a regular like little car Cadillac? Sexy. And then it wasn't, but it was already living there. Yeah. So no one wanted to kick him out. <laughs> Hashtag cars from Sexyville. <laughs> Ow, we're living in the fast lane, baby.